This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما تعلمنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وعملا وقربا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا وارض عنا يا أرحم الراحمين ويا أكرم الأكرمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Okay, Bismillah So, we had some sound issues yesterday and that's why you should all learn how to lip read <laughs> But anyway, um, let's cover that material again today inshallah ta'ala, alhamdulillah um, So, we've been talking about Sayyidah Musa He's received his miracles, he's been told go to Fir'aun and today we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a, him and Harun a specific set of instructions and the instructions are uh, the instructions are to help them uh, firstly receive divine aid you know uh, f- further support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they're going to be supported anyway the prophets and but by way of teaching us right and uh, and also what we what we see is that um uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will tell them the method of making their delivery the most effective because ultimately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have to do he doesn't have to send us guidance he doesn't have to send us messages rather he does it out of his generosity so he does it he also does it in a way where it's the message is delivered in the most effective way all the prophets were handsome men all the prophets have beautiful voices and because of this people were able to engage with them and listen to them more readily as opposed to someone that didn't have this type of uh, this uh, this set of qualities so let's look at the uh, ayat um so bismillah so quickly we see um allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them wadhab anta wa akhuka bi ayati wa la taniya fi dhikri uh, go forth you and your brother with my signs and never falter in remembering me. Idhaba ila fir'auna innahu tagha faqula lahu qawlan layyinan la'allahu yatadhakkaru aw yakhsha. So go both of you to Pharaoh for he has truly transgressed all bounds. Speak to him gently so perhaps he may be mindful of me or fearful of my punishment. So let's look at this. So the first thing we can notice from this, he says, what have anta wa akhuka, right? Bi ayati, go you and your brother. So who's he speaking to? Primarily to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. It's interesting that we see in Surat, uh, Surat al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used a similar um, construction. He said, Ya Adam uskun anta wa zawjuka al-jannah, right? Adam, uh, you and your wife live uh, in paradise so the command is for both of them but the construction gives us this understanding that the primary mukhatab the, the one who's addressed um, and obliged with this command primarily is adam and his wife is you know um, is secondary in that uh, because allah created adam you know for, for the for, you know the angels made such that to him and he was supposed to go to be the father of humanity so he had the primary role here. The same thing here, Sayyidina Musa has a primary role. You go, idhab anta wa akhuka, go you and your brother. Right, so that's the first thing we can understand from this. And then when we look, he says, wala taniya fi dhikri, right, beautiful this. So he says, and do not slacken in my remembrance. Now this is, this is a very important point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, don't basically say the Musa said, So we can do tasbih much and rem- remember you much. So he says, Don't slacken in this dhikr uh, uh, in my remembrance. So the remembrance of Allah brings a lot of good. 
that literally is, is one of the greatest acts. Uh, that's why the righteous, you know, they tell, uh, uh, you know, their students, get your obligatory uh, actions of your deen in place leave what you can of the haram and then make much dhikr, make that your nafaz because there's a lot of good that comes with, with this. I mean the, the what more do you have to say beyond for the kuruni azkurkum, right? Remember me and I will consequently remember you. So there's Allah knows us, you know, we're, he's constantly aware of us, but there's a special attention at that moment when you're making dhikr, when you're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um إِذَا ذَكَرَنِي Right? Or either bi Um and I'm with him, he says in Hadith Qudsi when his lips move, you know, remembering me. Right. So it's very important. So what does dhikr do? Primarily, uh, dhikr brings something, this tranquility to the heart of a believer. And this can come uh, and support and aid and strengthen a person's resolve. Right, we see. I believe it's in Surah Al-Anfal. Ya, ya, yohaladina amanu. Ida lakitum fi'atan fathbutu. He said, "Oh, you who believe, when you meet a group, when you meet an opponent in battle, be firm. Right? Wazkuru Allah kafiran la allakum tuflihun. Right? And mention Allah, remember Allah much, in the hope that you succeed. Right? So this is, um, uh. Michael Salam is my niece. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, let's be professional. Um, so, dhikr is something really tremendous and powerful. So, yeah, like I said, it brings this, you know, this strength and aid to a person, and it gives them this confidence to continue, right, uh, and and be firm and be strong. And therein lies the secret, because when you have something to do, when you have a challenge, you want to dominate, you have to be on the ball, you have to... People that have a strong resolve can do anything, right? But anything that's physically uh, you know, possible, they can, they can achieve it with their resolve, and they'll go through obstacle after obstacle after obstacle, and they will conquer it, get into their destination, right? So, dhikr helps with that, right? And there's many other benefits. We know, like, in the, time, uh, in the end of times, and the time of Sayyidina Isa uh, والسلام, when he's with his followers on Mount Sinai and yet Juja, Juja out all over earth, they can't be beaten. Uh, the, the believers will, will be making dhikr and they'll be getting satiated. Their hunger will be removed by, you know, the, you know, the tasbih and the hamd and, the, you know, all these, all these forms of remembrance that they do. So he said, Wala taniya fi dhikri. And don't slacken, meaning the, your level of dhikr that you have, keep it open, continue with it, persist with it. Don't slacken, and therein lies the benefit, right? So the remembrance of Allah. So uh, it's, it's, it's simple as one of the righteous said, ma tawaqafu matlabun anta tutalibuhu bi rabbik. No goal will, will, will falter and stop. Uh, if if you seek it through your Lord. So at the beginning, you turn to Allah, oh Allah, help us, and then it will be facilitated. Yeah? And something that you just rely on yourself won't be made easy, right? Because there are external factors that are just not in your hands. Who controls it? Allah, right? So he said, and do not slacken uh, in, 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 my, in my remembrance. So now he addresses them both. Idhaba ila Fir'auna innahu tagha. Go to Fir'aun. He has transgressed all bounds, right? This Tughyan. And um, so he, he's transgressed all bounds. Uh, as we talked about a couple of days ago, we explained what this means. Right? He went to the very excess, excessive limits, you know, the, uh, the extremes in um, disobedience, right? And and, and dhulb. Now, here's the interesting part, and this is one of the most important things you can take away from this today. He said, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا Just listen to that. قَوْلَ لَيِّنًا Right? Compare this to other, um, other expressions. Listen to the uh, ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet, if you are harsh and hard-hearted, they would have dispersed from your presence. Right? وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا فَضْ is being harsh وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ Just listen to the, those sounds If you are harsh, فَضْ غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ Hard-hearted it, The words are giving the meanings off, right? And you can, you know, this is part of the beauty of the Qur'an Like You don't know whether the word is 
giving you the meaning first or the, or the meaning is, you know, the, the, the sound or the meaning behind the word is really beautiful. So he says, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ لَيِّنَا So go and speak a gentle word to him. Speak to him nicely. So is this always the case? We'll see. We'll see. Because sometimes you have to be firm. And, uh, but we look at the context there, right? But here, in the, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Sayyidina Musa and Harun, go and both of you speak nicely to him. What does speaking nicely entail? Is it that they go and they start flattering Firaun? Oh, Firaun, you're such a great ruler. All these people, you know, are, are happy under your rule. You're doing such a good job. And you know what? Keep, keep it up. Keep everything. No. They would not say that because that would be, you know, mudahana, as they say. Now. That would be basically... Um, uh, leaving uh, the truth, not supporting the truth, and doing something that is, you know, wrong and in, inappropriate, right? So, um, so that's what it is. Um, so he said that uh, speak gently. So speaking gently is speaking the truth, but it's the way you deliver it, right? So um, I'll tell you a little anecdote uh, a sister came to me uh, a while ago and she was having problems with her husband her husband was neglecting her in terms of you know not helping with the children all these sorts of a lot of a lot of difficulty she was having and she brought it up with the husband a number of times in the past and he just didn't listen he didn't you know nothing was happening so she's like i'm you know i'm frustrated and fed up i don't know what to do and i said to her go talk to your husband and tell him and she said i've done it i said okay but this time go Make sure you're calm yourself, right? Now go to him and, you know, speak to him in a way where you're not accusing him. Where you're not saying, oh, you're nothing but this, you're nothing but that, you don't have me. Go speak to him in a way where you're not accusing him. Watch your tone and, you know, choose your words carefully. And so she said, okay. And she did so. And for the first time, the husband actually said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> You're right, I do, do do these things and I should be helping you more and all this stuff, right? And so that's that's what it is, speaking gently, right? And so what's the first thing in this? It's the tone, right? Because you can you can say thank you to you, you can be saying thank you to someone, but you're making it sound like an insult. Thank you, right? So it's the tone, it's the way you put it across. Then it's the choice of words. Don't choose words that are going to offend someone or upset someone, right? You know, choose words that, you know, this is just a normal speech. Now, I mean, the point here is who who is being told to speak gently? Musa and Harun, the prophets of the time, right? Of Bani Israel. And who is, who are they going to speak to? Is it, is it you know, are they speaking to the old man that's been cleaning the mosque for, you know, 20 years and you know speak to him gently no go speak to the worst tyrant on the face of the earth the the genocidal you know despot who's claimed to be god himself right go speak to him but speak gently right and so there's a lesson in that so you, you start and you know you do your best to speak kindly and gently to people but what happens is sometimes people what they do is um they they manipulate the situation as we see Firaun did this, right? They manipulate the situation, so they get so either get they get aggressive or or they they take the the the, the conversation in a, or they take the interaction in a direction where if you remain just soft the whole time, um, they will bend the truth, they will alter the truth, they will manipulate you, right? Um, so or if they get aggressive or something, then in that situation, you be firm, which is not harsh. You be firm, and and what happens is you, you, you be firm yet polite. You know, there's no swearing or insulting or anything like this. You be firm and polite. So he said, speak to them gently, and we'll see. This actually happens. Sayyidina Musa did have to be firm eventually, right? فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا Really beautiful. Why? لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Hopefully, he, you know, uh, in the hope, you speak to him like this, in the hope that he will يتذكر, he will remember. So تذكر, يتذكر, has this meaning of some, remembering and reflecting over a long time. 
right? Either he, you know, he'll take you on board and eventually it will sink in, or yaksha, or he'll immediately fear. And we talked about khashir being this reverential awe, he'll immediately have this awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How would that happen? Well, he would see, well, here I am, you know, if you would say to himself, you know, you could say that he's claiming to be God, and yet. Here comes two men, you know, Musa, this, you know, I raised him. And now he's thrown a staff, he's thrown a wooden stick down, and it's become a snake. And, he, you know, Fir'aun, who's claiming to be God, can he do this? No. Therefore, there is a being who is much more powerful. And then that would lead him to have this awe and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then maybe change his ways. You know, that's, that's the idea. So, <clears throat> that's what happened. Sayyidina Musa had a concern and he said uh, <clears throat> the Quran puts his qala, they both said Rabbana inna nakhafu an yafruta alayna aw an yatagha uh, our dear loving Lord we fear that he will go to excesses right? or he, you know he, he yafruta alayna that he'll, he'll, he'll punish us, right? he'll just as soon as he'll quickly you know, start, uh, go to resort to punishment, Musa and Harun have come in, how dare you come and say this to me and that's it, right? take, take them away get them killed, right oh and yatagha, or he'll be excessive in his dhulm and <clears throat> oh you know um, uh, Allah or oh, excessively, you know, be excessive in his dhulm and you know, cause them harm, uh, and or uh, even others could be harmed. For example, you know, Fir'aun could he knew Musa, he knew who his mother was, he knew Harun, right? And because his, um, although they didn't know it at the time, it was Musa's mother that came and uh, breastfed uh, Musa, right? And obviously, Harun's around, his sister's around, he could have had them all killed, right? So that there was concern about this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, eased their concerns. How? He said, uh, he said to them, uh, uh, تَخَافَ, don't be afraid. So now it's not like, uh, in, you know, like some people have, the, you know, these uh, memes where they say, you know, someone says to them, don't be sad, then it's not being sad. It's not that. He's not saying just don't be afraid. What he's doing, he's removing the cause of their fear, which is, he might go to excesses. So he says, don't be afraid. Inni ma'akuma. I am with you. Asma'u wa ara. I hear everything. What you're going to say to him, what he's going to say to you. And I see everything. So Allah is going to be aware of everything. And which the meaning is, I'm, I'm with you. I'm supporting you. I'm helping you. <coughs> if he does go to excesses, then what you then what you can do uh, is just relax because I will look after you. I will protect you. I will take care of you in this situation, right? There's the issue, right? There's the issue. So uh, he's he's removed their fear. So they have nothing to fear. They have nothing to worry about. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is with them. So what does happen, right? So some Surah Al Isra. Um, I, I omitted the early part of the ayah just for brevity here. So Fir'aun فَقَالَ لَهُ Fir'aun So Fir'aun said to him, إِنِّي أَظُنُّكُ يَا مُوسَى مَسْحُورًا So he said, I, uh, I really think you, O Moses, are bewitched. Someone's done magic on you, right? قَالَ لَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ أَنَّ SubhanAllah, very powerful. لَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ مَا أَنزَلَ هَا أُولَاءِ إِلَّا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بصائر. وَإِنِّي لَأَظُنُّكَ يَا فِرْعَوْنُ مَثْبُورًا So what's this? So he said, Moses replied, You know well that none has sent these signs down except the Lord of the heavens and the earth as insights. And I really think that you, O Fir'aun, are doomed. What's happening here? What's happening here? A simple situation. So then Musa and Harun, they went and they spoke to him. And we'll look at the initial interaction shortly. But they spoke to him, but he got aggressive, right? And because he started getting aggressive, you know, there's something called being uh, humble and there's something called being meek, right? A believer is not meek. What is meek? Where you're a pushover, you're a doormat, you're a punching bag. Anyone can say whatever they want to you, right? No, a humble person uh, might, uh, you know, uh, might overlook things, right? Um, a humble person might overlook things. Right, but 
they, they, they're not just going to cower and back away, right? The Sahaba were people of strength, right? Izza. So yet they were also humble. They had no arrogance in their heart, right? Arrogance thinking that you're better than someone and oh, it results in you thinking you're better than someone or um, refusing to accept the truth, as the Prophet said. بطر الحق وغمت الناس Refusing the truth and looking down at people. So we, we look at this hadith. <coughs> we look at this concept. <coughs> so here it is. Um, so Fir'aun was firm, not firm, he was actually aggressive, right? So what did he say? He said to Musa, I mean, he said, Inni la adhunnuka ya Musa mas'hura. So dhun here, adhunnuka, it's, uh, he's saying, I, I really think. So basically, it's basically um, an understanding that you reach, a conclusion that you reach after looking at um, uh, in uh, uh, factors that would indicate it, right? Uh, proofs of certain things. Once you've looked at all that, then you come to a con conclusion, right? This is it. So he says, I'm convinced, O Musa, that you're bewitched, meaning um, someone has done some magic on you so that you're not thinking straight, right? Because obviously, what's his perception? He thinks he's a, he's a god, and he thinks, he says, because this river flows in front of his house, the Nile, I, you know, he must be a god, right? And that's what his understanding is. So he's saying that Musa, you're not seeing this. Therefore, your mind is clouded. Someone's done some magic on you, right? And so he's saying this, and it's an insult, right? It's not a polite term. So, so the Musa says, "Lakad alimta." So before this, "Lakad," there's a custom that's implied by God. You know that no no one has revealed these or sent these down, meaning the 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 miracle of the staff in the hand, illa rabbu samawati wal ard except the Lord of the heavens and the earth, the Lord of everything, basair beautiful as basair. What does basair mean? Basair is the plural of the word basira, right? And what does basira basira mean? Basira means ma bihi yuraful haq that through which the reality of matters is known. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent them the hand, uh, gave him the, the miracle of his hand glowing and the staff turning into a snake as a miracle through which people can understand reality. People's hands don't just glow like that. Something must be happening. Someone must be doing this. Um, staffs don't turn, in, don't turn into snakes just like that. Something must be happening, right? Someone must, you know, a being who has power beyond our power must be be doing this so therefore whatever Musa is saying is true when he's telling us to stop doing these things he's telling us there's consequences to this right so through these miracles you can see and it's a very powerful word even the sound basair right very very powerful sound so and then he says so he shows his firmness, right? And I am convinced of Fir'aun that you're destroyed, meaning you're going to get destroyed. And I, I believe Thubur, Mathbur, it means you're going to get destroyed by degrees until you're eventually completely gone, right? And, you know, they were given time. He was given a lot of time. Some of the uh, scholars have said that between Musa coming and <clears throat> when Fir'aun was drowned, it was about 15 years. Right, so Allah knows best how long it was, right? But this is what happened. So let, let's see what, what did Sayyidina Musa say, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ba'dihim Musa wa Harun. Then, moreover, after after the previous messenger, we sent Musa and Harun ila Fir'aun wa mala'ihi bi ayatina to Fir'aun and his mala mala'a. So, literally, mala'a in Arabic, uh, so what they say, Fir'aun and his chiefs with our signs. Um, so they behaved arrogantly and they were a wicked people. So let's look at this, what's being said here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he sent Musa and Fir'aun to Fir'aun and his mala. What does mala mean? Mala in Arabic means to fill some, some, something. But mala here means the elite, the top people of a community, of a city, of a government. That when you look at them, they fill you with awe. Like, wow, these are the important people, the movers and the shakers, right? And so he sent uh, these prophets to Fir'aun and his people with, he said, we sent them with our signs, these tremendous, huge miracles. But what did they do? Right? Fastakbaru. Right? 
subhanallah so they were they were arrogant they became arrogant now the word for arrogance in arabic is is used in two with two forms there's istakbara like in this ayah and takabbara right in in another so takabbara means and so therefore takabbur as in some languages they use that word for arrogance it means he exerted effort to become bigger right so the focus is, is on this exerting effort and like, bigger than you actually are right istakbara <clears throat> has a meaning of trying to be bigger and continuing on that again and again as much as you can right so both forms are what happens what did the prophet say how did he define arrogance batarul haqq wa ghamtun nas refusing the truth so comes and tells you you know what what you're doing is wrong you know but you feel that you know this person would feel that no i'm too i am beyond this literally it's the, i'm i'm how, who are you to tell me i am greater than you or i am greater than this criticism so they don't accept it wa ghamtun nas and looking down at people why because they think you're superior to people right so asrifu aya wa asrifu ayati an alladhina yastakbiruna fil ard bi ghayri al haqq allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that i will turn my signs away from those who become arrogant in the uh, in the land in the in the on earth without right and no one has right to be arrogant right arrogance you know this, this haughtiness you could say only we don't need suit someone who has every perfection right it's you know if if, if you're a being uh, what do you say that ali ibn abi talib say right really beautiful statement but profound he said mal ibn adam al fakhr what what is what's up with the son of adam what's up with the human being and boasting why is he boasting awwalahu nutfatun madhira his first state is a drop of liquid which is filthy right akhiruhu jifatun qadhira his final state is a corpse which people find detestable wa huwa ma bayna dhalika yahmil al adhira and between this first filthy state and this last filthy state he's carrying feces he's carrying you know poo around in him right that's the human being right so if if you think that you're this big you know you know right and rather any good quality that you have or you, you know or that anyone has it's it's a gift from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ma bikum min ni'matin fa min allah every single blessing you have it's from allah so you know who are we to start thinking no oh, i'm so great so if you catch yourself you know with this feeling in your heart then <clears throat> stop it and say look this is not me i reject it reject the thoughts right i mean for example let's say so you know someone buys a new car and you go to get it washed and there's people you know allah gives different risk to different people maybe you know the poor in the dunya will enter paradise 500 years before the rich of the dunya will right so they actually it's easy for them so anyway so this person might go buy buy a car and you know he's getting it washed and there's some poor people there's people cleaning it they're earning a halal income great right so they're cleaning it and you know if a thought comes to this person's heart i'm better than them i have this there's the problem so you stop that no it's not me it's all a gift from allah you know and don't even entertain it this is shaitan's when people start worshiping he usually does this you know oh look how look how righteous you are and look you've prayed your fourth prayer and you're sat there you're making zikr these people have gone off home you know these kind of thoughts ignore all that it's all shaitan right and reject it but what is the main lesson arrogance blinds it's as simple as that arrogance blinds people from the truth blinds people from what's beneficial for them and we ask allah to protect us from it right because there really is a problem with it honestly right um you know people's overconfidence is their weakness right that's what you know throws them down that's what defeats them right it's the arrogance so we ask allah's protection so <clears throat> he said fast takbaru so they, they they became arrogant wa kanu qauman mujrimin you said qaum is used when people are really effective at something and they really really were a truly criminal people they really were criminals you know what else do you call someone that would just go and you know murder babies right and you know really these criminals right? allah protect us 
So then what happened? So we've got a couple of ayat here. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا وَسُلْطَانٍ مُبِينٍ Indeed, we sent Musa with our signs and compelling proof. So Sultan, from Sultan, right? Power, authority, very powerful word, Sultan. And where did this authority come from? From the miracles, right? And it really is, you know, something very, very profound, this stick turning into a snake and his hand glowing, right? إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَقَارُونَ فَقَالُوا سَاحِرٌ كَذَّابٌ So he sent them to Fir'aun and Haman and Qarun. Uh, so who is uh, Haman and Qarun? Haman is the, the individual who um, Fir'aun used for, for political control over Egypt, right? He had, you know, he had that power uh, over people. He was quite gifted with these things. So when he came to political matters and when he came to dis dispatching things and giving commands for certain objectives, he tell Haman, Ya Haman, ubunili sarha la'alli abluhu asbab as-samawati wal-ard. Abluhu al-asbab asbab as-samawati wal-ard. So he said, O oh Haman, build me a tower. Because... He heard that Sayyidina Musa's Lord is in the sky. So build me a tower. I'm going to go up and look for him. Right? And so anyway, so what's, what we would take from this is Haman was giving the instruction. So he was a slave driver. So he was the one that was instructing all the people, you know, go and, you know, build this uh, tower. And then you have Qarun. Qarun was uh, from Bani Israel. But he transgressed against them and he was supporting Fir'aun and he was given so much wealth, it's unimaginable, honestly. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that, you know, like now you have a bank account with the money in, right? And, the, you know, whether it's support, or, you know, anyway, I don't want to go into economics, but you just check your app and bank account, this much money, great. So obviously in the past without bank accounts, you had to keep your money in your gold somewhere. So he had so many places where and so much money to put he had so much money he needed many locations to put his uh gold and whatever in there were so many of them that the keys to opening them were so many that you needed a group of strong men just to carry the keys about let alone the actual money that's how wealthy he was right and then he died right and what what did that money do for him right nothing had he spent it in ways to please Allah and his, you know, and his messengers of the time, he would have benefited forever, right? Anyway, so, فَقَالُوا سَاحِرٌ كَذَّابٌ And they said immediately, Sayyidina Musa came and they didn't stop, they didn't think, they didn't, none of this. Uh, they just said, he's a magician, right? He's doing tricks and he's a habitual liar, right? كَذَّابٌ Someone that lies over and over and over again. And so, big problem. Right, big problem them refusing the truth. So, what happens, right? Uh, okay, so let's look at what actually happened. So, um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this, the Quran uses this, this style sometimes, like for example, He'll say, like he he'll say to um, Musa, go and say this to Fir'aun and then the scene jumps to after Musa actually said it and then we see what Fir'aun responds. It's like that. So he said, go to Fir'aun and both of you and say to him, we are the messengers of the Lord of the world, worlds, right? The Lord of all of, all of existence. So now there's, there's a couple of other ayat. Fakula inna rasula rabbil alameen. Right, that we are, we too are the messengers of Allah. Um, and here it's, we too are the one messenger. And in another ayah, inna rasula rabbik, we are the messengers of your Lord. So Sayyidina Musa will have said all of these things, but the Quran chooses specific things and it's uh, for in different contexts. So the, the surah, uh, the context of the surah, like Surah Taha. Uh, gives you know so anyway the, the context of the surah determines you know how the expression is done you know it's just uh, Arabic style so we won't focus too much on that but here why is it said inna rasula uh, inna we as two are the one messenger rasulu it's because to say that you know they're both 
they've come with one purpose there's one message there's one mission from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala both of them are united and determined uh, to do it and they're supporting each other it's just like when uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in other verses that such and such a people uh, they denied and they called all the prophets liars right when in reality um for example, right? In reality, they just deny one messenger. But denying one is denying all because they all have the same ultimate truth, which is Tawheed, La ilaha illallah. So, so what happens then? So he said, an arsil ma'i, an arsil ma'ana bani Israel. So he said, we've been told, uh, wait, let me read the translation. So we are messengers from the Lord of uh, all the worlds, commanded to say, let the bani Israel go with us. Uh, Pharaoh protested, did we not raise you among us as a child and you stayed several years of your life in our care? Then you did what you did, being utterly ungrateful. So let's unpack this. This is, this is where the believer is not a fool. The believer sees how things are. You learn from your interactions with people, right? You don't fall for tricks and deceptions and manipulations and deflections right so what happened is um uh, he said uh, so they were told to say send bani israel with us because they were meant to move to go to palestine right so send them with us but what will this entail losing their economy right which is built on their slavery losing all their slaves losing all this power losing face right so Fir'aun having faced this reality my god you know, well, he didn't say that, right? But, you know, seeing that this, this, these two people have come, Musa has come. I know Musa, he doesn't lie. And he's saying he's a messenger from Allah and he's got this stuff that turns into a snake. I can't do this. None of these people can do this. No one can do this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they denied these signs whilst their souls were absolutely certain of them, right? So, Subhanallah, so, you know, so Sayyidina say Musa uh, said this to him. Now, Fir'aun, what could he do? Option one, submit, accept the truth, admit he's been wrong. Okay, take Bani Israel, I will mend my ways, I will change. Or option two, become even more staunch in rebelling against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and deflect this obligation from myself. So what does he do? Option two. So what does he do? He brings up this, okay, Sayyidina Musa killed someone, right? We talked about that. But he brings this up in a way, but he's using emotional blackmail uh, to Sayyidina Musa, trying to make Sayyidina Musa feel bad. Look, we did all of this for you and this for you. And, and then you went and uh, you did all of this. You killed a person. How dare you, basically, how dare you come and tell me now about uh, what, what, you know, that I'm doing something wrong, right? So what does he say? Alam nurabbika qala alam nurabbika fina walida and this is really powerful in, in the Arabic, right? He said, did we not, so did we not raise you right within us? Fina, like amongst us, the closest people, his family, his, you know, his children. Did we not raise you amongst us as our own child, walida, since you're a baby? Right from then, um, we raised you, and so he's saying, I was there raising you from day one, right? I was like a father to you, right? And we, you know, we know Sayyidina Musa will have seen through even growing up, he'll have seen through you know the tyranny that was happening, right? Anyway, so I raised you, so I mean, and the, the way he put it, Alam Nurabika, didn't we do this? So, oh, the only response is, Yes, you did, right. Unless you want to lie. But Sayyidina Musa would not lie. So he said, so the, you know, the only response would be, yes, you did. Right? So it's it's kind of like putting him on the back foot and using his emotions as a manipulative tool against him. Right? And many, many years you stayed amongst us, right, of your uh, of your age, of your life, right? And even Sinin Sana is used usually in the context of a bad year. So maybe he's saying, Allahu Alam, I have to check the tafsir of this, but maybe he's saying that um, 
that even those years, you know, you, you cause us difficulty, right? Anyway, Allahu A'lam. Anyway, but you stayed in our, uh, you stayed amongst us many, many years. وَلَبِثْنَ فِينَ مِنْ عُمْرِ كَسِنِينَ For many years of your, of your life, you stayed with us. Like, we did all of this for you. We raised you. وَفَعَلْتَ فَعْلَتَكَ الَّتِي فَعَلْتَ And this lookery. He said, you did that deed that you did. What is he talking about? Killing that um, copt. Killing that Egyptian man. And but the way he he expresses it, it's like it's so disgusting. I can't even say what you did. So I'm just going to say that thing that you did. Well, faalta faalta kallati faalta, and even the repetition of the word faala, uh, and this is permutations. It gives this meaning of disgusting. Yeah, just just say it, get you know, you did that thing, right? And so he's saying after wa anta min al kafirin, and your state when you're doing that. Was that you were, uh, uh, you were a kafir, you were of the, the people who are known to be completely, you know, ungrateful, disgusting ingrates. You were known, it's like you were one of them at that time when you were doing it, right? So this is the, the thing he's saying to Musa, manipulating him. He's not addressing his own issues, right? But Sayyidina Musa does kind of call them out. So let's see, what does he say? So he says... <clears throat> So he doesn't deny it first. So let's read it and I'll come back to it. Moses replied, I did it then, lacking guidance. So I, fl so I fled from you and I feared you. Then my Lord granted me wisdom and made me one of the messengers. How can, uh, how can that favor of which, um, uh, of which you remind me uh, when it was only because uh, you have, it was only because you have enslaved many Israelites. So different so he's saying I, I did it then when i was one of the lost dolin so let's just stop with this word and if you look at um the tafsir i did on it's on the seekers guidance uh, youtube page of surah al duha wa duha alam yadid wa wajadaka dal i'm going to in detail there but generally the word dal dalal to be lost is of two types so you don't know the directions to a place and you get lost this is not blameworthy and the other one is you know directions, but then you ignore them so you get lost. This is blameworthy because you knew you knew what you had to do and you didn't do it. So say the Musa is out of the Dalin, those who were lost is the first type. Guidance, revelation had to come to him, right? And you know, and so he did it, you know, he thought he was so, you know doing something right. He didn't mean to kill this person. And you know, so so he says that I did it when I was, you know, lost. Like I didn't have a clear criterion, right? So, where is it? So it said, "Fafarar to minkum." So I did it then, uh, you know, lacking guidance, right? And then "Fafarar to minkum." So it's in as though, it's as though Firaun is also saying that, "How can you be telling me what's right and wrong? Look at you, you did this." So he says, "Yeah, I did it then, but I didn't know at that time, right?" "Fafarar to minkum." So I fled from you. "Lama jitu, lama khiftukum," and when I was afraid of you, I fled from you, right? Uh, so then my lo loving Lord gifted, granted me. Wahaba is, is a gift that you don't deserve, right? And that's why when, when people make him dua for children, Rabbi Habli, the Riyat and Tayyiba, as Sina Zakaria said. You know, so this verb, uh, Wahaba, is used. Wahablana miladunka rahmatan, right? And Rabbana Hablana min azwajina wa dhurriya qurrata a'yun. وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا As the dua is in the Quran. So, I mean, so, uh, so he, he, here is, he's saying, and my Lord gifted me wisdom, the ability to see what's right, what's wrong, how things should be done. So he granted me this, right? وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And he made me of the messengers. Is that, so basically, now I know, now I know better. And I know that what you're doing is wrong. And then, is that it? No. He buys everything. So he says to Fir'aun, um, uh, He said, that blessing that you're, you know, that you're recounting that you did for me, right? You raised me. Right? I spent many years of my life in your, uh, amongst you with your family. That, that favor that you're talking about, you did that whilst 
You had enslaved Bani Israel. So don't start telling me that I did you favors and I was good to you, whilst my relatives, my tribe, and the children were all being persecuted by you because of you, right? You were killing babies, you were enslaving people, make them do all your building, all your pyramids. And, you know, it was worse psychological, you know, harm. Like the ladies, they, as soon as uh, she gives birth to a child, if they find out they'd kill her, sorry, they kill, they, they kill the child. And then eventually got to a point where there's hardly any, any any boys to grow up, and then they can't. There's no slaves to do their, you know, build their pyramids or whatever. So they said, okay, let's let them live one year, and let's kill them the next year. Can you imagine being a, a parent, being a mother that gave birth in, in this situation, right? Imagine the harm, right? Subhanallah, right? What you know, what? They, so he said, you're saying, or oh, you raised me. You know, one one of the Israel, you raised me in your palace and I, you did this for me, you did that, did that for me. Whilst at the same time you're doing all this, sorry, not going to work. So we see here, Sayyidina Musa clearly did not fall for his manipulation. And this is how the believer is, you see, and you take a step back, right? You don't fall for, you know, your emotions at a time. You take a step back, sometimes you sleep on a matter, right? And you reflect on it and you take a step back and you assess things and, you know, where is the truth, right? This is the beautiful dua of the Prophet. No, well, sorry. Uh, many of the, uh, some people have ascribed it to the Prophet, although I, I have read some of the Hadith experts say it's not ascribed to the Prophet, but to some of the earlier Muslims. Some have said Abu Bakr, some Umar. Allahumma arini al-haqqa haqqan wa rzuqni tiba'a. Oh Allah, show me the truth as being the truth. And allow me to follow it. وَأَرِنِ الْبَاطِلَ بَاطِلًا وَرْزُقْنِ اجْتِنَابًا And show me what is falsehood as being falsehood and allow me to shun it. Right? So this is what he, what he was. So Sayyidina Musa saw, saw through this and he said, no. Right? Your argument is not going to work. So after this, film, okay, tell me about your Lord. He's been brought down a few notches, right? Which we'll, <clears throat> we'll look at, uh, inshallah ta'ala. Um, Tomorrow. So let's quickly look at some of the lessons we can draw from this. <coughs> Firstly, much remembrance. A lot of dhikr, you know, much remembrance of Allah is a means to gaining strength of resolve and support from Allah. Allah helps someone, right? Um, there's this uh, one of the one of the righteous from Pakistan, um, from Pakistan, Mia Muhammad Bakhsh. So he's got this long poem called Saif al Muluk and uh, so he said, I think, with the first line, Usta Nam Chataharan Wala Kisi Medan Harda. So he said, the one who keeps repeating his name, Allah's name, then he doesn't he doesn't lose in any battlefield, right? In the sense, he's saying, if you want success, dhikr, remember Allah, right? And so so that's that, right? And so your relationship with Allah, you want it to fly do this right second the basis in dealing with people is gentle speech right you know be nice to them be kind to them and you know talk like that when facing aggression be firm yet polite don't stoop to a, a lower level right be firm and polite and firmness means you can you know sometimes say something back right in in islam <clears throat> like in the sharia you can't accuse anyone of zina but um, like you get this, you know, so, you know sometimes people that when they're inviting people to Islam, especially like you know a lot of times atheists, you know I've I've experienced this. Right? You know you, you might be talking to someone, an atheist, whatever, and they'll make a joke out of the whole situation, and and you know in if if in the science of debating adab al bahth al munadara, you can't you can't do things like this, right? It's like you know disqualifying <laughs> disqualifying factor. Right, because you, you take away from the actual debate and you start picking on the individual, and you know it's a means of you know, it you know it's not accepted, right? So you know sometimes so you can't like in the Sharia you can't you know, call someone uh, say someone's committed zina or anything like this. But if someone uses uh, uh, you know a particular term with you, you can say it back, right? And but you know the believer doesn't you, you don't stoop to swearing and, and these sorts of things, right? And you know, uh, and that's how it is. Will you be firm? Um, you know, there's. I quickly tell you, there, there's. Uh, I got a call. Uh, I got a call from someone once, and 
this person I have blocked him for a good reason, right? Because uh, the person's you know um, active when there's fitna. Otherwise, you don't hear about this person. And and then something happened. He called me of a number that I didn't know, and he's like, "Oh, it's me." And I said, "Look, there's you know I was polite. I was joking with him. But I said, look, there's a reason why I've blocked you. You've blocked me. Yes. Um, so okay. Uh, anyway, I need to go. Salam alaikum." <laughs> And the day. Like, you don't have to don't get into the you know the fitna. I like, don't engage with it anyway. So the basis in dealing with people is this, right? Okay. Third lesson: arrogance blinds, right? So always be on guard. Always ask Allah for protection from it. You don't want this want to be in this situation. Right? It can just blind you completely, right? As we saw with Firaun. And wrongdoers often use manipulation to deflect the blame blame from themselves. Like, um. Firaun, you know what do he what? All he could have said, yes, you know what, you're right. I've been persecuting these people, but instead, what does he do? He says, Musa, you're at fault. You're the one who's wrong. You, we raised you, and you killed this person. Hang on, let's look at you know. If you look at the, you know, if you have a look on on the continuum of wrongdoing. Okay, Musa, it was manslaughter, right? And you know you you get off free you know you can you can be let off completely you know in law uh, with that and he didn't intend to kill him he was actually helping someone right so okay he did that but you willingly did all of this for so many years right you know all of this genocide and you know enslaving people so you know right so not addressing that and then that's what he was doing right and then the last point is. Believers recognize their faults, right? So he said, "Yes, I did, but I, I didn't know better at the time." And you know, I filed to Idan wa Anamin al He said that, right? And but what's the bigger thing? He didn't just fix it on himself. Oh no, I'm so bad. No, rather, but Allah gave me this, and Allah gave me the wisdom, and Allah made me the messenger. So believers um, recognize their fa- their faults. And they frequently recognize Allah's favor. That's the thing you do. If you have something good in your life, don't say, oh, no, I, you know, I'm not this. No, you say, you know, Alhamdulillah, Allah gave me that. Allah's made me like this. It's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So, uh, Alhamdulillah, it's a gift from Allah that, you know, we, <laughs> we did this today with sound. Um, so, let's call it a day here, inshallah, and we shall continue. Um, we shall continue. Okay, there's some comments. Um, uh, alaykum salam. Uh, you can just um, you can send me a message on Twitter or Instagram. Um, okay, I'm going to sing this with an album. Okay, some of the uh, Why why will the poor enter paradise before the rich? Well, the rich have been enjoying themselves in the dunya with the cars and the helicopters and, you know, all the other things. Whilst the poor have been, you know, struggling to, you know, subhanAllah, I, uh, I went to see my mom earlier today. And uh, she was telling me about this, be this old lady in their village in Pakistan. And uh, she was really poor. And, you know, she, she would invite people to her house and she'd say, look, I don't have any, I don't have any salon, I don't have a dish, a curry, anything cooked. But you know, come and have chapatis at my house, and you can eat it with chilies, like green chili. Break off a bit of green chili and eat, eat, eat your chapati with that. And uh, Subhanallah. So these people, they'll be, they'll have their their share. So they go and they enjoy paradise for the equivalent of five hundred years, half a day in the akhirah. But they'll they'll be enjoying that. Whereas the rich will get there, but this time ahead to compensate for that. Yeah, and the rich will have you know. Have more to answer for as well. You know, Allah protect us. Um, but be grateful. You know, Alhamdulillah, if you're rich as well. Okay. Uh, now I give that response. Uh, okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay. I mean, Allah bless you all. Right. Okay. We'll continue tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seeker's Guidance, the Global Islamic Seminary. 
Visit SeekersGuidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit SeekersGuidance.org forward slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.